everyone, this is Mary from SPG Cuts, and I'm here today with some fun new projects, including our super cool Victorian row house. So it's just one, these three houses are the same, except for the paper and the colors are different. But I made three of them because I think they just look so cool all together, since that's how you see them in real life. So whether you make one or you make more than one, I think it's going to be super cool. And I also think that no matter what kind of paper you use, it's really going to look awesome. Especially, you know, obviously if you use coordinating paper and choose colors from your pattern paper, it's going to look really cool. So it is definitely a box. It can be a gift box or just a fun project, whatever you want to do with it. And since the windows are vellum, you can put an electronic LED battery powered tea light candle or two or three inside to light it up if you want. Or you can stick some kind of really fun, fun little present in there for someone, make it super special. And even though it's, it's detailed and it's, it's, um, you know, it's got a lot of details that are fun, but it's not that hard to put together. So I've got all my pieces cut out to show you how one of these goes together, as well as the rest of these three dimensional items. And we also have a super cool new box card that looks like a instant camera. And the cool thing about the box card is that it folds flat and you can put it in its envelope so that you can mail it or give it to someone. And when it you know, comes out of the envelope, it's nice and dimensional, which is super cool. So that's also surprisingly easy to put together, which I'll show you here in just a minute. And then if you want your cutting machine to do most of the work for you, I think a fun way to, to accomplish that is to use some really fun lace. So this card is only a couple pieces, but all the intricate detail is, you know, cut by your machine. And I take a lot of extra time to make sure that each of these little, little cutouts is nice and smooth so that when your machine cuts it, it cuts it perfectly like butter every time. So we've also got that same similar design on the front of this pretty gift bag. And you could make this plain with no cutout or no lace, or you could, you know, put whatever you want in the middle. You could put the photo in the middle. And if you want to use a photo, you can let your machine cut it out exactly how you want it by using our photo template, which is included in this download. And it explains in our PDF, in your download, it explains exactly how to use the photo template with your machine to cut your photo out perfectly. And we also have a separate video. If you click over here, you can see that step by step as well. It sounds complicated, but it's so easy. Once you do it once, you'll be like, that was so super easy. So we also have one more card, which I think is really cute. And um, it's just whimsical and it's cute. But the cool thing about this is that it's mostly just two pieces. Like you don't have to glue together all the letters because when you put it together, the letters show through the various layers and there aren't that many layers. So I think that's always good to keep it nice and easy. So the paper that I used this time is super cool. It might be one of my, my top 10 favorite papers of all time because it's just really pretty and really, um, the colors are awesome and I kind of used all my favorite pieces. So these, uh, these leftovers are still gorgeous, but you get the idea. It's like gold foil, and it kind of reminds me of the style of Rifle Paper Company, which is one of my favorite favorite designers. Anna Bond over there makes some really gorgeous stuff. So this kind of reminds me of her style, so I just love it. And there's all kinds of fun brads and everything. It's by My Mind's Eye, and it's called Market Street. But like I always say, whatever kind of paper you want to use for your projects is going to look super cool. So I've got my pieces cut out to show you how these three-dimensional items go together. So let's get started. So first things first, I'm going to start with probably the simplest project here, the camera box card. And in your PDF, the first page is the camera box card. And it shows you exactly how these pieces are embellished with these different shapes. Just in case that helps you to see it laid out, you can go ahead and glue together your pieces like this. So we've got this the front of the card here, which has this little piece here, which we're going to glue inside. And the body of the card is these two main pieces here that are decorated with panels. I went ahead and decorated them on the outside. And then insert number one gets decorated like this and insert number two looks like this and then the back panel 
looks like this. And the back panel is part of the body of the camera here. So you can go ahead and decorate yours however you want. This white piece goes on the very back, and then we've got these three paneled pieces here. And the next thing I'm going to do is glue together the two main body parts of the camera. Like so. Just a little bit of glue on that side tab. And then some glue on the other side tab. And I'm just lining it up as precisely and carefully as possible. And then you can go ahead and lay it flat on your table to make sure that it will fold flat. So there is the exterior of our box card all ready to go. And then the next thing I want to do is put this little, this cute little piece of a Polaroid type picture that's popping out of the front in place. So I want to put a nice line of glue on the back side of the tab and then we want the um, <clears throat> we want the bottom of it to be pretty much flush with the bottom of the the box. <clears throat> and then we can go ahead and put our two inserts in. So to do that <coughs> Wait, sorry, hold on. Okay, sorry. So to put the first insert in, I want to put some glue on both of these tabs. And these, you want these tabs folded away from you. And you want to put it inside, being careful not to get not to get too much glue all over your box card. And you want the bottom of it to be flush with the bottom of the box. So it's all sitting on the same surface. And as you can see, these, these line up here and these line up here. And then before it's completely dry, let's go ahead and make sure it will fold flat and mine doesn't really want to, so before it dries, I need to adjust it a little bit so that it's going to fold flat. There we go. It's still lined up nicely and it folds flat, so we're good to go. Might need to put a little extra glue on there, but you get the idea. And then we just want to do the same thing for the next insert. And the cool thing about this project is that those two, these two photos in the back here, you can of course use paper like I did, or if you want to put photos back there, of course that would look super cool too. And this next insert also sits flush with the bottom of the box. And as you can see, this lines up here with the edge of it on both sides. And again, before it's dry, let's just make sure it folds flat. And it does, so we're good to go. And like it says in your PDF, these two squares are just three by three squares. So if you want to trim that manually, you can. Or if you want to trim a photo to three by three, you can do that too. Next for our lace gift bag, you can see it's really pretty simple. It's mainly just these two pieces here. And as you can see, there's a cutout in one of them, which you can you can, you know, obviously do it like that, or if you want it to be plain, you can just check the extras folder for a plain, a plain front bag with no cutout. And we've also got these two rectangles, which are going to be the bottom of the bag. And I went ahead and I glued a piece, my piece of vellum back here, and I went ahead and glued the lace as well as this red frame piece on the front of the bag. And now all that's left to do is just glue it together. It's really pretty self-explanatory. I think it's best to start with the sides. Doesn't matter which piece you grab first, as long as you put a nice little thin even layer of glue on that side tab and then just do your best to line it up 
as nicely as possible. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. And you want to get your glue pretty close to pretty close to that fold line so that it doesn't start coming apart. And line it up as best you can. And then we can even just fold this flat to press down on the table. It's kind of nice if you get a chance to lay something down flat. It's always nice to uh, be able to press it down that way, obviously. And then we can fold over these two pieces on the top. And these are just here to reinforce the top of the bag and to reinforce the holes so that you can put some pretty ribbon through there. And of course, it's still a paper gift bag, so I wouldn't want to put anything. If you put something too, too heavy in there, obviously, maybe you want to hold it from the bottom and not by the handles, of course. But it's super cute and definitely functional and pretty darn strong, so hopefully that is useful for you guys for all kinds of different occasions and seasons and holidays and all that. So then the next thing we want to do is just cover these four tabs in a nice thin even layer of glue. And then you want to take the larger of these two rectangles, one of them's a little bit larger, and you just want to glue that right onto the bottom and kind of adjust it as necessary while it's drying. And then you can flip it over and glue the smaller rectangle right into the bottom to cover up those tabs and strengthen it up a little bit. So finally for our Victorian row house, I've got the main body pieces of the house here. So first we're going to put together the main body of the house and then we're going to add the stairs and then we'll add some trim and then we'll make the roof. So for now, for the main body of the house, I've got four main pieces, which are the four walls and each of them is numbered at the bottom. So your machine will have cut this number out of your piece or into your piece. I just went ahead for this video and darkened them in with a marker so you could see them. So I went ahead and as you can see, like piece number two here, I went ahead and glued this panel on. I glued vellum on the back and the window frame on the front. And then for piece number three, which is the back of the house, I just went ahead and glued this rectangle on. And then piece number four here, all I did was glue the vellum onto the back. We'll wait a little bit for its panel. And then finally, piece number one here, I went ahead and glued two little pieces of vellum. There's one little piece up here and one down here. And then there is a panel up here that's the same color as the house, which I embossed with a embossing folder. It's called Notebook by Sizzix. And then I put the window frame on. And then there's another panel down here that's the same color as the house, which I also embossed with the same folder. And then there is some layers to make up the garage door, which is one, two, three layers. So those are all in place. So the front door here is this little piece, which has a piece of vellum glued on the back. And then there's two little panels on the door, and then the door is glued to this piece. So first we're gonna put this piece into piece number one here. It's really pretty straightforward and pretty simple. I'm gonna start by putting some glue on this top tab up here inside the doorway. And then gluing the top of this piece right into place. So the straighter and more precise it is, the better, obviously. Then everything else will fit together really well. So we can kind of bend this out of the way and then put some glue on this bottom tab. And then we want to get our little doorway into place here. And I'm really just doing the same thing I just did up at the top, just gluing the bottom into place. 
So if you want to set this on the corner of your, your work table like this, you can push down from the inside, which makes it a little easier to push down on. And then for this third tab here, I'm going to lay it down flat so that I can hold it down and put some glue on it. And then I just want to make sure that it's lined up really nicely and glue that into place. So there is our doorway, and now we can grab our window piece here, and this is the, the two-story bay window that's going to go inside, and on the back there are three strips of vellum, which I went ahead and glued into place, and then for all these fold lines, it takes a little bit of extra patience to fold inside here, but you can kind of push with your, maybe your one fingernail, and just gently kind of curve it until you get the fold going between all the windows. And if it gets if it gets a little messed up at all, you're going to be covering it up anyway, so don't stress out about that. And then <coughs> you want to start by folding all the folds away from you just to get the creases going. But then as the second step, we want all the tabs that are around the perimeter of this piece to be folded towards you. Then we can go ahead and glue these bottom tabs together to form the bottom of the window. And then this triangular shaped one needs some glue. And it's starting to take shape. And then we're going to get ready to put it into the wall of the house. So I want a nice thin little layer of glue on this tab on the side. And then you can just carefully put that right into place. Now if you want, you can, let's say this is the edge of my table here, you can set it on the edge of your table so that there's a flat surface so that you can push down on your piece. I can't really do that here because it would probably be hard, hard to get on film and the edge of my table right now is like beveled so that's not going to work. But you probably have a normal table so you can do that. So next, I'm going to gently fold this piece out of the way and get a nice line of glue on the other side tab. As you can see, I've got a line of glue there. And I just want to carefully get that into place. And I want to make sure it's lined up at the top and at the bottom and all the way down. And again, you can set this on the edge of your table to push down if that makes it easier. So now the next thing we want to do is glue these five tabs into place. So to do that I want a nice thin layer of glue on all five of those tabs and kind of get them into place and then Again, you can lay this on the edge of your table to lay it flat and push those down into place. So there we go. So now the next thing we can do is take our two window frames and those just get bent in two places. And as you can see, one of them has a slightly larger bottom. That one goes on the bottom. So. The other one goes above it. So I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on this guy. Just a little thin, thin line around. And then 
press that into place. And you can see right where it goes because it fits, it fits exactly over those window openings. And again, if you want to flip this over and lay it flat carefully to press that down flat, that would be helpful. And now we can go ahead and put the bottom into place. And again, that just goes directly over those window openings. And I got a little too much glue on mine. It's showing through, but you get the idea. And I'm sure you can be even more careful than me. So I'm just going to flip it over and carefully lay it down. So again, if you have like the corner of your work table, you can kind of use that to lay individual areas flat to push down from the other side. So next we've got these two little pieces of trim. One of them is slightly larger than the other one. That one goes on the bottom. So just a little thin line of glue and that goes smack dab in the middle of the bottom part of that window. And then the next one just goes a little bit underneath the top window. So just about this much underneath that top window up there. So there we have piece number one all ready to go. So let's go ahead and take piece number four here, which is going to go just like this. And you can totally see exactly how it's going to get glued into place. So we're, we're just going to go one one tab at a time here and just carefully get each tab into place one at a time until everything is glued together between those two. So like I keep mentioning, if you want to you know, say this is my table, you can put this on the edge of your table so that you can push down on a flat surface underneath this piece. That's what I was doing when I was in my regular craft room, making this at my regular table. I was using the edge of my table a lot to do that. Because obviously it's a lot easier to be able to push two pieces together when they're on a flat surface. So as you can see, I just glued that top tab into place. And now I just need to bend these little doorway tabs out of the way. And those are going to get glue on them and get glued behind the door. So I'm just doing my best to line it up as precisely as possible and I'm just kind of squeezing it from both sides as the glue is drying. So that's lined up nicely and now there are just two small triangular shaped tabs. I'm just going to put one dot of glue on there. It doesn't need to be perfectly covered in glue. And then there's another one on the bottom. So you can go ahead and bend that down, put a dot of glue in there, and squeeze that from both sides. So now, we can go ahead and glue piece number two here to piece number one. Nice and straightforward. So to do that, I'm just putting some glue on the side tab here, grabbing piece number two, and lining it up nicely. And I can actually lay this down on my table. 
And then we can take piece number three here and glue that to piece number two. So the paper that I use for this house that I'm working on right now is pretty crazy with all the stripes and polka dots. So it gives it a totally different feel. It's not as much elegant, it's more like playful. So it's exciting to see the different ways that you guys make your projects look just all the different looks they can have based on the type of paper that you use and the uh, you know the person you're planning on giving it to or just the look that you want to give it it's really fun to see so now I'm just closing up the four walls here with some glue on this side tab And I'm just carefully lining it up. And I'm going to flip it over so I can lay it down flat and push down from the inside. Okay, so there's our four walls looking pretty good. And now we can flip it over and grab the bottom of the house. So the, uh, the bottom is just a rectangle here and I'm gonna go ahead and glue it into place because it really sort of strengthens everything up, makes it nice and straight for our next steps. So of course you just want your glue to be a nice little thin, thin layer getting pretty close to the edges and getting very close to the corners and just pop that bottom right into place and if you need to adjust it while it's drying you can and then flip it over and push down from the inside on all four of those tabs and then you can take your liner piece and cover it with some glue and just pop that right into the bottom to finish it off, give it a nice finished look and also to strengthen it up a little bit. And it's, it's kind of tough to get it centered, but whatever, as long as it's down there. Okay, so there's our four walls. Now let's take a look at the stairs. I've got the sides of the stairs here. As you can see on my finished house, the stair sides are these two pieces. I went ahead and put one together, and there are two, obviously. And those are just made up of these two pieces and these two pieces. So let's put the other one together. As you can see, these look kind of similar. Obviously, one's longer, and they both have a tab on them. So grab either one and put some glue on this, this tab. And you really wanna line it up as perfectly as possible so everything is, you know, lined up really nicely so that your stairs are nice and straight. And then put some glue on the other side tab. Get any cat hairs out of the way. And again, you definitely want that to be lined up really, really straight and perfectly. So you can see it's gonna take this shape. So it, it doesn't matter which side you're looking at, just go ahead and cover this whole side of tabs with a nice thin layer of glue going all the way out to those corners. And my glue is a little, a little bit messy, but you get the idea. And then grab the corresponding side and just kind of work it into place. And everything kind of falls together nicely and then 
once it is taking hold well enough to, to flip over, you can go ahead and push down from the other side on those tabs so that everything's nice and flat and all the glue is gluing and you're good to go. So now you can do the same thing on the other side. So here's my two uh, sides of my stairs and I went ahead and pumped that other side on there and they're identical. So now we can move on to these, the stairs, the center of the stairs, and that's just these four pieces. So these are, obviously these are gonna be the stairs here and I want to put some glue on the bottom tab of this piece and glue those stairs together. And then I want to do the same thing over here. And as you can see, there's a little tiny circle cut out of this piece right here. And that's just to signify to me and you and everybody, hey, this is the top of the stairs. So as you can see on these two side pieces, they also have little circles and that's just to say this is the top. So once you've got your stairs together like this, we want to go ahead and crease the appropriate little steps so that they form stairs. So that's a lot easier to do <coughs> at this point when you can see where the top is and what you're doing. And I'm almost done here. One more. So we have a nice stair formation good to go. So it doesn't matter which side we have it on right now. The next thing we want to do is fold fold these larger larger tabs out of the way and set it down flat on your work surface and then either one of these we're going to grab either one um, and we just want to make sure the circles at the top and the circles at the top up here and then what I'm going to do is lay it on on your work surface you want to protect it with a piece of scrap paper or whatever some old chipboard or something because we're going to get a little bit of glue <clears throat> onto your table unless you cover it up. So as you can see I just put a, a line of glue around the perimeter of those stairs and I'm just going to stick it right inside right inside of the stairs and I'm going to push down on the back and the bottom of the stairs to kind of anchor it and then I'm just going to quickly work those little stairs underneath underneath what I'm doing here. So as you can see, basically it can be a little tough. If you didn't if you didn't get it the first time, like I just didn't get it the first time, we can always add a little bit more glue to the stair perimeter down there. And then we can hold it up in the air and do this like this. Or you can try to flip it over and work with it like that. If you uh, if your craft mojo is really going and you're feeling like unstoppable, you can lay it down flat like I had it and kind of get it all in one felt swoop. Or you can kind of tinker with it a little bit more like I just had to do. But this crazy, crazy look inside is gonna be hidden so it doesn't have to look picture perfect. So the next thing we want to do is just cover these tabs with some glue going out to those little corners and then we can just stick again do a double check for where's the circle okay the circles at the top and here's my top up here and we can just pop that right into place and just adjust it as necessary as the glue is drying and maybe press it down for an extra you know 20 seconds or something and 
if you need to re-glue anything, you can. Mine's kind of coming apart a little bit, so if yours is, you might need to add a little bit more glue. But you can see there are my stairs. So the next thing we want to do is put our stairs onto the front of our house. And as you can see, this side panel is still not, not on yet. That's because we want to put the stairs on first. So it doesn't matter which one of these two identical pieces I grab. I'm going to, it's going to go like this. So I'm going to kind of put my finger here to show me where the glue needs to go. So I want my glue pretty much on the bottom half of it, a little more than half of the bottom. And then I just want to carefully put that into place, lined up to make a flat surface here. And if you want, you can stick your hand inside your house and push down from the inside, or push it from the inside to help that glue really take hold. We can also carefully lay it flat on our surface and maybe push from the inside with your fingers and from the outside. We just want to make sure it's nice and straight, nice and strong, and nice and dry before we mess with it too much. So the next thing we want to do, you might want to maybe give it a few more, maybe wait like 15 seconds or something so that it's nice and dry and then we want to glue our stairs into place. So again, here's my little circle. That means that's the top of my stairs. So I want to put glue all over this side of the stairs as well as all over the back. <coughs> and mine's coming apart a little bit, but you get the idea. And then I just want to carefully slide that into place and hold that while it dries. Maybe give it like 10 or 15 seconds so that it's really got a nice straight firm sturdy hold and again you can always push from the inside and maybe give it a few more seconds but then the next thing you want to do is glue this guy into place so as you can see we want glue to just be on the the edge of this top part and then all the way down so once again, I'm going to put my finger at the bottom of this like landing here. And that's where I want my glue to only be on this side. Not that it really matters because it's going to be hidden. But if you want to get pretty precise, you can. So I've got my glue on this. I'm going to set that down for just a second. And I'm going to cover this side of the stairs with glue and you can be a little more precise and careful with your glue and then we can carefully put this side of the stairs into place and again I've got my one of my hands on the inside of my house here pushing from the inside I'm squeezing I'm making sure things are like all at you know right angles and properly lined up nice and sturdy and maybe give it give it a little a little breather there and then we can finish putting the trim on our house so you may have noticed there's two shapes like this that's because you have the option of having it white or having it a color but when there's two layers it's nice and thick so it looks like nice pretty trim I did do that on purpose I swear so the next thing we want to do is grab this piece and it's going to go together like this and go right on the front of our house. So to put this guy together, we can put some glue on this top tab up here and then roll it up and make sure it's nice and nice and dry and then we can put some glue on these three tabs and fold this end over into place so this is going to go right onto the front of our house so 
you can kind of take a look at where your glue is going to need to go. You can see exactly where you're going to need to glue it. I want some glue on this back side and on these tabs as well as down this whole strip. And I also want some glue on my house on top of these two sides of the stairs. And my glue is a little messy, but you get the idea. So now I just want to push that, press that, push that carefully into place. And I've got some glue that's kind of oozing out. So if I had my X-Acto knife handy or a pin or something, I would just kind of get that glue out before it dries. I have like a, a junky X-Acto knife that I use for like times like this when I just want to scrape some glue out of the way. So there is that piece. And now we can take this guy and we just want to, basically what I want to do is one little line of glue going all the way down in a straight line. Oops, I'm slapping my glue all over the place. And we can carefully, carefully line it up onto these, these fold lines. We want this little strip right centered. And then we want this, obviously we want this front part to, to look nice and even too. So there's a little wiggle room under there since it hides, kind of hides everything. So as long as it looks nice on yours, then that's awesome. So now I'm just going to glue my white trim piece onto my colored one because I want the white one on top. And then sometimes I just skimp by with a tiny little dot here and there of glue, like, like I just did because I'm so crazy. And then just stick that right in the middle. So there is our house, except for the side panel and the window frame. So all we want to do is cover this in a nice, a nice little layer of glue, kind of going, going very close to the edges and very close to the corners and around those window holes. And then a nice squiggle in the middle. And then it's pretty clear where this guy goes. And it just fits right in the center of everything and just kind of covers it all up. And once you have it placed properly and centered, you want to go ahead and flip that over and press down from the inside so that everything's nice and flat. So there is the side of my house and just make sure it's nice and flat. And then you can go ahead and put a line of glue around your window frame. I like to skip gluing on top of the vellum because sometimes it makes it um, wrinkly. So I like to just glue around the edge for my window frames like that. And there is the bottom part of our house. So now all that's left to do is the roof, which after all that, this is really simple. It's really just three main pieces. I've got decorative panels glued onto these guys. And this one's got a lot of decorative panels. It's really just this blue piece with the vellum behind it, and then several layers of pretty panels, and this white trim, and the window frame. But then, all we need to do is just pop the front and the back on, which is really pretty darn easy. So I'm going to start by anchoring this piece with one tab here. And I'm going to line it up really perfectly so that all I have to do is put some glue on the rest of the tabs and it's going to be lined up real nicely. So you can see I'm just working my way around and you can flip this over and push down from the inside if you want or whatever, whatever floats your boat. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on 
the final two tabs and pop that into place. So there is the back of my roof. I'm going to push down from the inside. And then you really just want to do the same exact thing on the front, except the face of the roof kind of extends beyond the roof a little bit. So it's slightly different, but really you can still be precise with how you're placing it. So as you can see, I've got the corner of my, my roof lined up with the corner of the roof there. And again, I'm just going to get a nice layer of glue. You can be even more careful with yours. And then I'm just lining up the edge of the roof with the, the fold of the rest of the roof here. So now I can go ahead and put some glue on these final two tabs. And we are almost done. And line everything up nicely. And then the most exciting part is next, which is seeing how it looks with the roof on. So you can go ahead and pop your roof on your house and you are all done. One final thing is the only embellishing I did was I put some little little pearls on this guy here. I thought that looked cute, but it's so detailed that I don't think it really needs a lot of extra embellishing. So there you have it, super fun projects. I hope you have a blast making them. And if you do, you'll have to share a picture on our Facebook wall or put it on your own blog and pin it on Pinterest or put it on Instagram and do hashtag SVG cuts so we can all check it out because I love seeing your projects and so does everyone else. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time and happy crafting. Learn more by visiting www.svgcuts.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and watch all of our crafty videos on YouTube. It's a world of crafty content with you in the middle. SVGcuts.com, inspiring you to live creatively and beautifully.